Okay, so I'm, I'm Massimo Filiucci. Um, I have the, uh, I started out my career as an evolutionary biologist. I was interested in uh, uh, first in Italy and then the United States. Uh, I was interested in gene environment interactions, you know, nature nurture kind of things. That's what I did my experimental, you know, theoretical work. Um, I've also began to become over, over time more and more interested in sort of the general structure of evolutionary theories, the, the logic underlying it, the relationship between logic and evidence and that sort of stuff. And so without realizing it, I started doing philosophy of science. Um, then my, my midlife crisis hit, and I did two things. Instead of buying a red car, you know, getting a, a whatever it is, I moved to New York, which greatly improved the quality of my life. And I uh, moved full time to philosophy. I went back to uh, graduate school, got my PhD in philosophy, and thanks to one of uh, to Dan's letter of recommendation, I got a, a, a position at CUNY um, as a full time philosopher. Um, one of the things that, that struck me when I met uh, when I met Dan the first time was this um, uh, quote that I think is from Darwin's dangerous idea about. Uh, not there being any such thing as science without philosophy. It's just science that has the baggage, the philosophical baggage, un unexamined. Um, so I thought, here yeah, I am. Um, I am a professional scientist with you know 20 years in my career. You know, more than 100 publications, a few books, and all that. I take the time to go back to graduate school and become a philosopher. So surely, the scientists will take me seriously because I'm one of them. The philosophers will take me seriously because I actually did the, the damn hard work of reading every one of Plato's dialogues and that sort of stuff. And of course, the, the reality is usually, not, not always, but usually the other way around. Now, I, for the scientists, I went to the dark side. For the philosophers, I'm much too much of a scientist. I'm interested in actual empirical questions. And um, as Dan put it earlier, that's really weird. It's like being interested in the China's economy. While talk, talking about philosophy of mind, um, it, but it has been a great, a great um, ride so far. And, and my general uh, approach to that um, is that science and philosophy are different ways of thinking and different ways of doing things. And in part, they do deal with different uh, uh, kinds of questions, uh, but that they both belong to what it used to be called scientia, a larger version of a larger concept of knowledge. And, and I think that the best thing we can do about it is just to. Uh, sort of intellectual respect, both um, both enterprises, despite the number of scientists or philosophers who do spend their time doing things that are not particularly relevant, uh, and we should correct them when they do. Um, in terms of current projects, I have a new uh, book, the coming book coming out for the University of Chicago Press next year on the philosophy of pseudoscience, uh, or what what is normally called the demarcation problem. Uh, goes back to Popper. It was uh, thought dead by Larry Laudan in the 80s, and then uh, uh, now I and a few other people got together thinking, actually, there's probably something else that can be said about it or should be said about it. So, you should say about the demarcation. Yes. Uh, sorry. The difference between what is the difference between science and pseudoscience, or science and non-science in general, uh, which goes to all sorts of interesting issues about you know, can you actually come up with reasonably uh, uh, sensible definitions of concepts such as science and pseudoscience, what is it good for, what, what are you doing, that sort of thing, and so on and so forth. Um, Rebecca pointed out, uh, brought up earlier the, the question of question of, of progress in philosophy. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing right at the moment, in fact, is to write a book about progress in philosophy, because I, I find that philosophers are very highly self-flagellating uh, individuals. Uh, they are hypercritical about their own discipline, and sometimes for good reasons, but that is not one of them, I think. So yeah, I, that's what separates philosophy from physics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I mean, I've been thinking about it, and I think I have a, a reasonable argument that philosophy does make progress, and, and I have the ways to show it, but it, of course it's a different sense from the way science makes, makes progress, which I think is totally um, reasonable. Um, as you know, uh, several of you know, I, I sparred um, occasionally through, um, through, through via blogs with several of you, um, but I, I, I assure you it was always in, 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 a, in a positive and constructive way, at least that was the intention. Sometimes it might not have come up that way. Um, because I believe people have, have mentioned um, David Hume several times. I, I think I'm the only one actually has a tattoo with one of his um, uh, quotes, and the quote is, um, uh, truth springs from argument amongst friends. And uh, I, I hope that that is going to be the sort of the, the general idea of, of his worship as well. Um, as far as changing my mind, um, well, I just did recently. It's, it's Dan's fault. Dan's fault. Uh, him, James Lenniman, uh, wrote this book that he mentioned earlier, and I happened to 
um, uh, read it with a group of graduate students this year, and it really did change my mind, opened a new vistas about all sorts of things. So I now find myself changing my mind about certain aspects of naturalism, philosophy of mathematics, uh, certain implications, metaphysic, metaphysical implication of, of, uh, of physics. I could change my mind back, but frankly, had it just done it, I'd rather stick with it for another year or two. But I'm, I'm open to that.